Yo guys, what is up and welcome to HITC Football. This will be the second to last time that you will actually hear me saying this because I'm actually leaving the channel. I'm leaving HITC Football. This will be my second to last video. In February, you will see one more video from me. This will be a video that I will put a lot of work in for the last time for you guys. And to be really honest, I want to thank everybody at the channel, everybody at HITC Football for giving me this great opportunity because the last year I did what I really love to do. I was able to talk about football. One of the things I love the most in life and in the last year all of the views on my videos combined are several hundred thousand which was absolutely amazing seeing so many people watch me talk about football so anyways I want to thank everybody at the channel I want to thank you the viewers for sticking with me for an entire year I also have my own channel if you guys want to subscribe there and see some more football videos from me the link is in the description down below but in this video I'm going to be talking about all the Premier League clubs and I'm going to be ranking their transfer business this January window so without further ado let's get right into the video. We're starting off with Arsenal and they did some pretty good business if you ask me. Signing Trossar I think is a great signing for just over 20 million pounds. They signed Jakub Kivior as well. I really don't know that much about him but he seems to be a good player as well. They didn't lose anyone so to be fair any signing would have been good for Arsenal if they're already top of the table but I would have expected them to sign a striker since Gabriel Jesus is still out with an injury but I think a decent window. I'll give Arsenal 7 out of 10. Aston Villa oof, I'm not going to give them a passing grade. This is going to be a 5 out of 10. I I think that the signing of Alex Moreno from Real Betis is actually pretty class for only 12 million pounds. They signed another player from the MLS, I really don't know that much about him. But on the other hand, they also lost Danny Ings to West Ham for 12 million pounds. And I mean, the club is doing pretty well, they're in 11th right now. But in order to enter the top half, Villa need more goals and I think they kind of lack that department in this transfer window. Like I said, I really can't give them a passing grade, so for me, this will be a 5 out of 10. Now it's time to talk about Bournemouth and I really don't think that they had a great transfer window either. The signing for Dango Oatara seems pretty nice, 20 million pounds from Lorient. He seems to be a good player, they also signed Antoine Semenyo, but the club is already in the relegation zone. They have the worst goals against record in the entire league, and in this transfer window they should have focused on the defensive side more, but they really lacked in that aspect. In my opinion, this will just be a 3 out of 10. Now let's talk about Brentford, and this is a little bit strange, because Brentford is already in a great spot in the Premier League. The club is currently in 8th, which is absolutely insane. The club didn't lose any important players they signed a few players no immediate reinforcements but signings for the future and Brentford already proved that they're great at making those signings the signing of Romeo Beckham also gave them some good media attention and I'm not gonna lie I'm not even going to question Brentford's business anymore so I'll give them a very decent 7 out of 10. Now it's time to talk about Brighton and Hove Albion a club that is having a great season as well they're currently in 6 they actually have the chance to make European football this season but this transfer window really wasn't that great they lost a key player in are. They might lose Moises Casado as well, so that will be two key players if that actually happens. They didn't sign anybody of note, so this is just terrible. A 2 out of 10 for Brighton, this transfer window. And now we have to talk about Chelsea. They think that they're playing FIFA career mode in real life. I will actually give them a 10 out of 10. Just because they strengthened the entire squad in defense, in midfield, in the attack. Especially the signing of Mikhailo Mudrik, I think is a great one. Also Noni Madueka, I think is a great player. But that one is more for the future. And nobody departed the club. Chelsea really needed some work but they put the work in nothing but praise 10 out of 10 but one thing we also thought that they did some great business at the start of the season which really didn't turn out that well so the same could happen right here but as it stands right now Chelsea did some amazing business Crystal Palace I really don't understand this you guys need goals Wilfried Zaha is involved in 45% of the total output for Crystal Palace this entire season in the Premier League I'm just gonna say it if he gets injured Crystal Palace are done really they will be in big trouble but the fact that I didn't say any striking reinforcement just absolutely baffles me. 2 out of 10 for me, I really can't give them a higher grade. I think that they really missed the boat on this one. For Crystal Palace, this transfer window has been bad, but for Everton, it has even been worse. Everton are in a really bad place right now, which was already pretty apparent for a very long time. They're in 19th right now. Everton needed a lot of work. But they just completely didn't put the work in. That's not necessarily true. They actually were going to sign a great player in Danjuma. Which looked to be wrapped up before Tottenham swooped in and hijacked the deal. And as per today, Anthony Gordon is most likely going to join Newcastle United. Which will be another star player gone. So without a shadow of a doubt, a 1 out of 10 for Everton. I really think that this is not going to be a fun season for Everton. It already wasn't, but I think that the end might be worse than the start. This is very interesting because we have another club that I will give a 1 out of 10 for their transfer business. The club is Fulham and the 
reason is they literally didn't do any transfers. They literally signed zero players. And I mean, Fulham is still in a good spot. They're in top half right now. Actually, they're doing really well. They're in seven. So you might say that they really don't need any reinforcements, which could be a fair point, actually. But I'm literally here to talk about their transfer business, stuff that they didn't do. And if you go to school and you don't do an assignment, you will get a one out of 10 as well. So unfortunately, the same goes for Fulham. Now it's time to talk about Leeds United, another club who's not in a really great spot right now. At least they're not in the relegation zone yet. They're just one point above it. So Leeds really need to look down, but luckily they did some decent business this window. They needed a good defender and they signed Maximilian Weber. He also played at Ajax, so I've seen him. I think that he's a good defender, but I don't know. I really don't know if the signing that Leeds made are enough but for now it looks decent so I will give them a passing grade I will give them a 6 out of 10 then let's talk about Leicester City and I really don't understand why do the owners not see the urgency here after some great seasons Leicester City are really in danger of getting relegated sure they're in 14th so you might think there's no immediate danger right well they're just one point above the relegation zone as it stands right now the club signed Victor Christiansen a player who I've never heard of he is a defender though and Leicester really need to fix their defense but to just rely on a player that i've personally never heard of and i have a feeling that most of you guys didn't either is pretty risky if you ask me so i will give leicester a three out of ten just for trying but definitely not more than that it's time to move on to liverpool and they're having a pretty horrendous season especially to their standard right now the club is in ninth and signing no midfielders at the beginning of the season really came back to bite them in the ass but for this video we're only looking at this transfer window they signed cody Gakpo from psv for psv it was a pretty big fee that they actually got but for Liverpool, it really wasn't that much. So I personally think that's a good signing, but definitely one for the future. And where Liverpool and Chelsea are both having a bad season, Chelsea at least put in the work and Liverpool really didn't. So unfortunately, I will have to give Liverpool a 3 out of 10 as well. Now let's talk about Manchester City and I really don't know what grade I have to give them. The club is still in the title race. Okay, Arsenal is quite a long way ahead of them. But we're only halfway the season, so Manchester City still have a lot of time to make up some ground. They did sign a 20-year-old player from Argentina, who's most likely going to be a star in a few years judging from their track record but Manchester City really didn't need any signings they still signed a player who I really don't know that much about but who could be a star and just for that I know it's going to be strange but I will give them a passing grade it will be a 5.5 out of 10 the bare minimum just because I think that they really didn't need to sign anybody but they still signed a player for the future I think but yeah I know that this one is strange but a 5.5 out of 10 for City unfortunately I'm not going to go easy on their City rivals because I still think that Manchester United need a good striker and listen to my words I said good striker I didn't say striker so I don't mean Wout Weghorst. I still don't understand the signing. I mean, it's a plan B signing at best. And if the club want to finish in top four, they need more goals. There are actually rumors that Victor Osiman might join the club for 120 million pounds. But as it stands right now, they only signed Weghorst for the striker position. But for now, I will give Manchester United a 5 out of 10. But if they manage to sign Victor Osiman, I think that he will be perfect for the team. So this grade is definitely going to go up by a lot. Newcastle United get a 6 out of 10. I will just say it straight off the bat. And again, Again, I will probably have to justify why because the club didn't really sign anybody of note they got weight of some dead wood but anyways the club didn't sign any players the club didn't lose any player and I think especially the last part is probably one of the best things that could have happened to Newcastle this transfer window especially with the great season their club is having right now now let's talk about Nottingham Forest and they're kind of doing pretty decent I think that signing Chris Wood is great for Nottingham Forest he might not have been amazing for Newcastle but for Forest I think that this is a stellar signing the signing of Danilo from Palmeiras is also an exciting one. So to be fair, these two signings might actually just be enough to keep Nottingham Forest in the Premier League next season. Now let's talk about Southampton and Southampton are in big trouble. They're less in the Premier League and relegation could be a real possibility for the Saints. They had to do some business and I will give them that. They actually signed some players. They signed Carlos Alcaraz from Racing Club over in Argentina. But the signing of Miroslav Orsic from Dinamo Zagreb, I personally think is a great one. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm afraid that it's not going to be enough i'll give southampton a 5 out of 10 for trying at least but i fear the worst for the same now let's talk about tottenham and tottenham just had a great transfer window without doing a lot of business hijacking donjuma for everton might have been one of the best things that spurs could have done i think that donjuma is a great player he has been amazing for villarreal both in la liga and in the champions league but spurs aren't done yet they're also trying to sign pedro poro and might also sign nicolo zaniolo and there are also some rumors that milan skriniar might actually join the club i really don't know that one will happen but if they can sign one out of the last three players that i just named and i really think that Tottenham couldn't have had a better window but for 
for now, with the signing of Tanjuma, I will give them an 8 out of 10. Now let's talk about West Ham, and I really don't think that this is enough for them. Signing Danny Ainge is a great addition, I will give them that. But West Ham have some serious relegation worries, so I really hope that they know what they're doing. But as it looks like right now, I really don't think that it is enough. So West Ham, I will have to give you a 4 out of 10. I really hope that you guys can turn it around, but the way it looks right now is not really that great. I gave one 10 out of 10 this video, and I will have to give another one here. Because Wolves have done exactly what they needed to do. Their start to the season really wasn't that great. Right now they're in 17th, just above the relegation zone, only on goal difference. So the club definitely needed a lot of work, but I have to say their owners did a great job. Signing Mateus Cunha, Sarabia and Greg Dawson is absolutely insane if you ask me. All these players can literally come into the site and immediately do a job for Wolves. And the fact that they only paid 17.4 million pounds in transfer fees is absolutely ridiculous. So without a shadow of a doubt, a 10 out of 10 for Wolves. Guys, that's the video done. Like I said in the intro, if you want to see me on my personal channel, click the link in the description. My last video will happen in February on the HITC Sport channel, so I hope to see you there. And as always, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, click my videos to end screen right now, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.